So we learned one way to calculate delta G of a reaction. We learned that we could use this equation, delta H minus T delta S, and that would equation would work whether we were not in standard state conditions or we were given values in standard state conditions, we could make connections. We are going to learn another way to calculate delta G, okay? We're going to use something called the, um, oh, now it doesn't say up there yet. Hang on a second. Uh, we're going to use this equation. And this equation has something in it where we see little symbols that we've been familiar with before. We see a delta G, we see a little F, and we see a circle. Now we haven't seen this exactly, but we did see this before. When we use an equation just like this, we could replace all the G's with H's, and that was a way to calculate the delta H of a reaction if we went to tables with delta H of formation values. You learned what that meant, what the delta H of formation means. A delta G of formation is right along. It's very analogous to what you saw with delta H's. So here is the standard free energy of a reaction. It's standard because it's in standard state conditions. We have that little circle up there at the top, okay? We also see these delta G's of formations, okay? And that is its definition. Let's look really carefully. It is the delta G of a specific reaction, and that reaction is defined very clearly right here. The free energy change that occurs when one mole of a compound is synthesized from its elements in their standard states, okay? So we can go to tables, and it's going to give you a, a delta G for a reaction. That was not true with entropy. They just said, you take this substance, this is how much entropy it has. But when it comes to delta G, you have to talk about a change, a delta, and it's always going to be for a specific reaction. Now I want to see if I can find a value for a delta G of a specific substance, maybe somewhere in my notes. Bear with me. Let's say I had a delta G of formation of CH, uh, CH4. Delta G of formation standard of CH4. If I went to a table and I looked up that value, I would have a value of a negative 50.8 kilojoules per mole. That's what I would see in the table. Now this is a value of free energy available for a reaction when you make one mole, look at the definition, you're making one mole of this compound. So I'm going to put this on the right hand side. Making one mole of that from the elements, okay, in their standard state. Well the standard state is the most stable state of that element. Carbon is most stable as a solid in the form of graphite, okay? And hydrogen is most stable as a diatomic element that's a gas. So those are the most stable forms of carbon and hydrogen. Then I have to balance it, keeping a one mole over here. So when I look up a delta G of formation, I'm looking up the value for this reaction if I'm looking up the delta G of formation of that. So they're giving me a delta G for this reaction equal to a negative 50.8. There's a negative. That takes a long time to write, but this is quick and easy. This tells you the same thing as this. So conceptually I want you to know when you're given delta G's of formation, what in the heck you're being given? You're given a delta G for a very specific reaction that is defined right there. Okay? And this tells me by the definition that if I had an element and I want to know it gives free energy it, of formation, it would be zero. Hydrogen, okay? Elemental hydrogen. If I wanted to make one mole of this from its element in its most stable form, did anything happen? Certainly not. So there's no delta G for that. Its value is zero, okay? So we don't typically give you those values. We expect you to know that. 
This was very similar. We did the same thing when we were talking about delta H's of formation. We didn't give it to you for elements because we expect you to know that it would be zero. Okay, so you're going to do a couple things here. You're going to use that data table there and you're going to determine whether or not this reaction is spontaneous as it is written. Now, what are you going to use to predict that? Well, since I'm giving you delta G's of formations, maybe it would be handy to calculate the delta G using, let's back it up, using that formula. And then you'll be able to predict spontaneity. All right. I hope you said yes and that you got a delta G of this reaction as a negative 818.0 kilojoules. Negative 818 kilojoules. That is the value for it using that summation formula. So to get the delta G of the reaction, since I'm using standard delta G's of formation, it's a standard delta G of the reaction, it would be the delta G of formation of carbon dioxide, which was given to you, plus two times the delta G of formation of water. Common mistake students do if they're not given tables is they look up the wrong delta G of formation. Make sure you're looking for it for the liquid state. And then you are going to subtract both the delta G of formation of methane and the delta G of formation of oxygen times two. Now notice I didn't give you that value because it's zero, okay? Zero. It doesn't have a value, and so that put in your calculator correctly will give you a negative 818 kilojoules. Now, we have this way of calculating delta G. We have the summation one, We're adding up all the products and the reactants and putting it together like this. You could also um, determine the delta G of a reaction using a stepwise process where you're giving multiple reactions and you would manipulate those reactions and add them up to get the reaction you're looking for, okay? So if a reaction is a sum of a series of reactions, if you can come up with a new reaction by adding these reactions together, then you can take the delta G's and add them together to get the delta G of the overall reaction. Um, I'm not going to show you an example of that and not even sure if your um, will be required to, to do that at this point, but I do want to mention it because we did this with Hess's Law. We learned how to calculate delta H in a similar fashion, and then we learned how to calculate delta H using Hess's Law, adding up these reactions. Um, some textbooks and somewhere, sometimes along the road, you might um, have to do that, but it's very, very similar to using Hess's Law when you did thermochemistry. Uh, All right, so we have our means by which we can calculate delta G. We can calculate it this way. We can calculate it using the summation. We might use a similar process as Hess's Law. Um, and we're going to find out some other ways, but not yet.